So now let's take a look at problems where the center of dilation is not at the origin anymore. If you remember when we said it was at the origin, it was really simple. We just took our scale factor, like uh, 2, and we just multiplied all the values by 2, and we were done. If the scale factor is anything but 0, we actually have to rely. We can't just like multiply. We don't have a very simple way. We just have to rely on our graph and just figure out where the points end up. So here's my center of dilation, 2, comma 3. And I'm going to graph my points, right? I have 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is my A. Okay. And I have a negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and down, um, up 3, 1, 2, 3. This is B. Okay. And I have the point 2 down to negative 1, and this is my C. Right. And let's put those together using a red line. Okay. So I'm going to go A to B, okay, and B to C. Okay. And I'm going to go C back to A. Okay. And so let's figure out how this is going to dilate by a scale factor of 2. Okay. So if I'm taking a look at counting from my, uh, my center of dilation, which is at 2 comma 3, up to A, it looks like all I'm doing is I'm going up one, two units, okay? But a scale factor of two means that I should double the distance, okay, that it was from that center. So I'm gonna say in this case, instead of going up by two, I should double how far I count. I'm gonna go up by two, and I'm gonna go up by two again. And I'm gonna end up right here. This is my new A prime. So let's just figure out what that point is. That's two comma, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven the point 2 comma 7. So that one's fairly straightforward because it's right on the same line. So I can do the same thing with C. If I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, right, I end up at C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down 4 again, right? A scale factor of 2 means do that thing twice. So I'm going to go down another 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to say my new C is down here. And that looks like the point 2 comma 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 down, 2 comma negative 5. Oops, that's, let's fix that. That's my C value, 2 comma negative 5. Okay, and then I have one more B. B is a little bit more challenging, but it looks like to get to B, I go straight over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and so instead I need to do that twice. So I went 5 to get to B, and I need to go another 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I'm twice as far away. This would be my B prime. All right, so I'm going to say in this case this looks like negative 8, 2 instead. Okay? So if you notice, there's no real algorithm here. Because I'm changing my center of dilation to not be the origin, okay, I'm going to have to just count boxes and, and use what I know about scale factor. Right? So it looks like this would be my new ABC, okay? which again just kind of expanded my graph out, and it pushed some of my values away from that center of dilation to its new point. Okay? So let's take a look. At another one, which maybe in this case we're, we're doing a, a dilation of one half instead of two. So I'm going to first plot my center of dilations, which is at negative two, and then down one, two, three, four, five. That's right here. Okay, so this is my center of dilation. And I'm going to plot each of my points, which is negative two up to three. All right, same negative two, three. All right, and then I have eight up to, or down to five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then negative two all the way up to 9. Okay? So let me do those in order. So this is A and C and B is way over here. So let's connect those together. We want a nice triangle. Okay? So this is going to be my triangle ABC. Okay? And our job is to scale this down by a factor of 1 half using the center of dilation over here. Okay, so take uh, what I'm looking at now is when I count up to A, I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whoop, let's try that again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 units up. So I have to make sure that the distance between my center and my new A, my A prime, is going to become half the distance because my scale factor is a half. So instead of being uh, nine units up, I'm going to cut the distance in half and say one, two, three, four, and a half, it would be right here, and I'd call this my new A prime. So that looks like the point negative two and negative a half.
negative 2, and I'll call it negative 0 0.5, okay? And I'm going to do that for each of them. B, it looks like, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 units away from my center of dilation. So I'm going to count half the distance, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there's my new B prime. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with C. At C looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units up, and another 9 units up. That's 14 units up, so I'm going to count 7 instead. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's my new C prime. So if I graph this one, which again I'll use green just to try to keep us so we can see all our pictures on the graph. Okay, I'm going to go from A prime to C prime to B prime and back, and I would say there's my new graph. Uh, the only uh, I, I'm just going to pull the information about my new B and my new C. It looks like B is over at 1, 2, 3, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to say 3, negative 5. And then C is over negative 2, and then up 2. It's at now at negative 2, comma, 2. Okay, so if you notice, again, when I'm looking at the... the the comparison between C and C prime, there's no very simple cut it in half or double it or add or subtract something. We really just have to take a look at where the center is, figure out how far away my new points are, right? And then once I know that, I can just have the distance or double the distance or whatever the scale factor is, apply that to the distance between the center of dilation and my point, and then enlarge it or shrink it by the scale factor.